Yeah. I know you see me. <laughs> like, um, what do you want me to do? F*** it off myself so you don't have to waste money on me anymore? I'm sorry. Like... Hello, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are a newcomer. Today, we're going to be watching a movie that I've been wanting to watch for a really long time, which is Lady Bird. That is it, and we're just going to get into it. We're eating rice cake which is a Korean thing. Rice cake and spicy sausage. And eggs, fried eggs. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Our college trip took 21 hours and five minutes. <laughs> hey, when we, let's just sit with what we heard. We don't have to constantly be entertaining ourselves, do we? <laughs> now she's angry. I wish I could live through something. The only exciting thing about 2002 is that it's a palindrome. Okay, fine. Well, yours is the worst life of all, so you win. Oh, so now you're mad. No. Oh, my God. Miguel saw someone knifed in front of him at Sakai. Is that what you want? So you're telling me that you want to see somebody knifed. <laughs> I want to go where culture is, but like New York, did I raise such a or at least snob. Connecticut or New Hampshire, well, where you, writers you live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. Mom! You can't even pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. Wow. <laughs> I saw that in the trailer a lot. I did not know it was going to be in the beginning of the movie. I could relate with the whole, I want to have this experience life because when i was little i used to watch a lot of coming of age movies a lot of them having to be with like girls running away or being in the street and i think i remember one time watching a uh vanessa hudgens movie where she was like i don't know what it was called but it was a vanessa hudgens movie uh she was like in foster care or the system and something like that. I forgot what it was called. I think it was Give Me Shelter or something like that. I grew up watching a lot of coming of age movies where like sad girls are like in the streets at night. <laughs> and I remember I was like young preteen. Like I was like 12 to 13, probably around that. I was in middle school. And I remember I was like, I wish I could be like those girls. <laughs> I want to have that experience because it, it's like it's like crazy to want something like that to be out in the streets at a really young age walking around <laughs> and you think that's gonna like give you some like life lesson and like some emotions but I was I was like I was that girl that was like oh my god I want to have that life and it's like why do you want to be sad in the streets alone and yeah <laughs> anyways so i was like yeah i want to do that a friend, of my friend, mm, mm. a friend of my brother's was like why would you want <laughs> to live that and i was like oh i just want to feel the emotion and it just seems like that would give you you know life okay, okay. like would give you a character and he was like well it's just it's good that you could just watch it instead of actually living through it. So just get that character to watching it, okay? Because living that life is not awesome. And then growing up and realizing and actually having to experience a little bit of that life, yeah, it's not great. When you're little, you think, oh my God, these people in these movies, they're so young, going through these hardships, they have so much character to them, so much stories. And then you go through it. No, don't like that. When you do go through something like that, and you grow up, and then you watch stuff like that, you remember what you said when you were a little kid. You're like, that was stupid that you wanted to live that. Why would you want to be in the street? <laughs> Walking around at midnight. It's horrible. There's awful men. It's, an aw it's so scary horrible things could happen to you there's also awful women like so many things could happen to you at night in the streets alone and i was just like glad that i wasn't 
in the streets alone. Because, yeah. So, yeah, I could understand because I was like that too. And I'm not saying that she wants to be in the streets alone, but she wants to, like, have experience. Julie doesn't need to be in quotes. But it's not my real name. It's not the same thing. I'm not sure you're right. Just let her do it. She want to be so special. <laughs> It's so different. Just once, I'd like to have the song New York Groove play and feel like it really applies to my life. You've never even been to New York. That's why I'm applying to New York colleges. Your parents would pay for that? Scholarships, financial aid. A whole lot of debt. Of summer gone. When this looks like a pretty place. It's California. Why is she so bad? She live in California. Probably not LA, California, but like, girl, you live in California. Go into the city of California. Go see things. You have to move to New York or New Hampshire or something. There are big, tall, terrible giants in the sky. Oh, wow. She likes him, really him. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say what's up and I'll see you in rehearsal. Thanks. I'm super excited. You, you live in the neighborhood? No, I'm from the wrong side of the tracks. Oh, my God. Oh, brother. This guy stinks. Our emotions going. We're going to play. First one to cry wins. Oh, wow. Cry over nothing? Oh, okay, acting, okay. <laughs> oh, did he just wanted to cry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pop rollers for your Jim Morrison hair. Thank you so much. They look like sperms. Oh, okay. Don't leave me hanging. Give me a nod. That's good. Maybe even a verbal confirmation. Yes. Okay. That's what I like to hear. All right. So I'm going to be passing back your graded quizzes. I uh, does she have a thing for the teacher? Okay. I got my eyes out on him. <laughs> I was like, the girl has a crush on the teacher. I'm like, immediately. I have an eye out on him. Because you know what? Adult people have problems. They love student-teacher's relationship. In Hollywood, they're weird. Some of your friends' fathers could employ your father, and they're not going to do it if it looks like his family is trash. You ever go to sleep without putting all your clothes away perfectly, like even once? And don't you wish your mom hadn't gotten angry? My mother was an abusive alcoholic. Okay. Well, it doesn't make your actions even better because you don't hit her or something. Doesn't matter if I get home late, she'd be mad at me anyway. Your mom's hard on you. Yeah, well, she loves me a lot. And she's struggling with her own stuff. So if you're tired, we can sit down. I'm not tired. Oh, okay. I just couldn't tell because you were dragging your feet. Why didn't you just say pick up your feet? I didn't know if you were tired. You were being passive aggressive. No, I you wasn't. You are so infuriated. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling. Oh, it's oh, perfect. I love it. <laughs> oh my God, the moose wings. I A minus. Pretty sure it was an A. I'm not, but okay. It was. Okay. No talent when I see it. You're welcome. No, thank you. Mm. Gotta keep an eye out for Selena. I think Lady Bird wants to make an entrance. She's mad we don't have a spiral staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are we doing? Feeling good? Okay. Tired. Okay. Yeah. All right. I gotta get her home. We got the little one, but that was a really great choice. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. She just has a little student crush. Or a teacher. But, you know, you gotta keep your eyes out, because Hollywood be weird. Damn it. Where are you going? There's never a line in the men's room. Girl. <gasps> wow. Come <laughs> to Yeah, Jen is all tight. Maybe I'll see you to do or something, huh? Hey, I'm not paying you to flirt. I wasn't flirting. She had been. Okay. <laughs> From Uncle Matt. I think he and my mom are fighting though, so enjoy the lunches while you can. Oh, no thanks. I'm trying to lose weight. Lose what weight? This is singing. Wide, wide lines are singing. Okay. We're singing. Mm-hmm. Eight, nine, ten. You coming hot! You coming hot! Okay. Hey, Kyle. Lady Bird and I just decorated the nunmobile, like just married to Jesus. That's hella tight. Oh my god, these people. 
I mean, I guess these are her crowd. The oh my god, we're so cool to do anything for school. She wants to be that. Good girl. The government didn't have to put tracking devices on us. We bought them and put them on ourselves. Okay. It'll be a matter of time. Before what? Before they put them in our brains. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I would not hang out with this dude. I mean, they're, they're getting there, but it's like, okay. People are weird. The government is weird. Yeah. I know you see me. But remember when people thought the government was watching them? So they f***ing put tape on their cameras? And then it became like a cool thing to take pictures of tape on your camera through your phone and post it on Instagram? <laughs> Fucking racist. Wow. I didn't say anything. I didn't put down my race. Oh yeah, I'm sure they had no idea, Miguel. Excuse me? I'm not going to a f***ing university that's famous for its f***ing agricultural school. You need to calm down. And the fact that you... Is he Miguel, her brother? What is he to her? I think he's her brother. And why are you mad that his name is Miguel? He did not put down his race, so he did not go to college for his race. And that's f***ed up as you... Which I'm thinking you're also half whatever the hell he is, which is like probably this Mexican. You're half that too, but it's not his fault that you're white passing and you have like a normal white girl's name. It's not his fault, <laughs> okay? It's not his fault. Take it up with your mom or your whatever. Why did they give you a Spanish name? Like, it's so Hey, racist for you to say that he got into college for his race? Wow. <laughs> okay. That's f***ed up. Like, why have enemies when you have fucking siblings, huh? Why have enemies? <laughs> why? <laughs> Jesus Christ, he did not put down his race. Shelly, you'll never get jobs with all that shit in your face. Okay, bitch. <laughs> How about stop trying to be something you're not? Hmm. How about that? I'm trying to as much as possible not participate in our economy. I don't like money. So, I'm trying to. But doesn't Catholic school cost money? It mattered to my dad that I go to Xavier, so I'm trying to make him happy. I hate boys like this. <laughs> like, oh my god. But they work good together. They seem, both of them seem like they're trying to be something that are. I don't want to have sex yet. I haven't had sex yet with another person. Really? They're like clones of each other. Is dad depressed? Why do you ask that? The pills, they have dad's name on them. Dad's been struggling with depression for years. I didn't know that. Well, you so focus on creating yourself. If you took up close pictures of my vagina while I was on my period, it would be disturbing, but it doesn't make it wrong. Listen, if your mother had had the abortion, we wouldn't have to sit through this stupid assembly. Oh. Whatever we give you, it's never enough. It's never it enough. It is enough. Do you have any idea what it costs to raise you and how much you're just throwing away every day? Give me a number. You give me a number for how much it costs to raise me, and I'm going to get older and make a lot of money and write you a check for what I owe you so that I never have to speak to you again. Well, I highly doubt that you will be able to get a job good enough to do that. <laughs> On Baghdad last night, it was mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> they're both wrong in this situation. They, they both make each other feel bad. Okay. I mean, yeah, she makes her dad feel bad by having him drop her a block away from her school so they don't have to be seen driving her to school with their raggedy car, I guess. Not to be offensive and say <laughs> the car is raggedy, but like the way that she thinks these rich kids would be like, oh, you have a raggedy ass car. Yeah, and she says, yeah, I live in the wrong side of the tracks because it's like, oh, I'm poor. But no, they actually do live on well, on the different side of a track. But like, anyway, whatever. It's a joke to her. She's a teenager. She, she thinks it's funny. But also, you as a parent should not be telling your kid that they can't achieve stuff. Like, yeah, be realistic, but you ain't gotta be mean and be like, well, I doubt that you will get a job that will give you that much money. That's rude. 
And to make her feel like she can't achieve getting a job to make that much money is also dream crushing. You're crushing her dreams because you didn't have the dream to move out of a house and get a better job and do this and do that. It's not her fault. First of all, she didn't ask to be here. You gave birth to her. So all the money that you spent on her is your responsibility. You decided to have a kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe don't have a kid if you don't have the income. Like, get your shit together. You know? Live out your dreams. Figure out what you want before you decide, hey, let me have a child. You know? I don't know. Like, do that. And don't throw it in your kid's face talking about, you know how much money it costs for me to fucking raise you? I'm sorry you had me. I'm sorry that it cost you money to raise a child that you have. <laughs> like, um, what do you want me to do? Fuck it off myself so you don't have to waste money on me anymore? I'm sorry. Like, that pissed me off. It's like, yeah, she's wrong. There's like, she, there's flaws to her. But there's flaws to you too, mother. Like, it's just like, don't say that to your child. Like, I get setting reality and being like, hey, you don't, your grades are not that good. And because your grades are not that good and you don't focus that much in school and you don't do this and you don't do that, you might not get what you're trying to aim for. Yeah, sure. Sometimes people do get what they aim for, even though they're shit at other things. Like school. <laughs> and they end up getting a really good job that does pay a lot of money. Surprisingly, because I don't know, they have something. <laughs> <laughs> that's like besides looking edu well not education but like besides having a high amount of this grading from this whatever the f you know so you don't know maybe she'll get a really fucking good job maybe she won't but you ain't gotta throw it in her face like that that's dream crushing you don't have to be a dream crusher we got out early because all the irish girls got totally sloshed by noon oh my god is she going to her house ding dong i'm outside what oh my god oh she's gonna find out you don't live there so this is your house that lady in the other house was totally freaked out mm -hmm. why did you say it was your house because she wanted to seem cool I don't even sort of understand why somebody would lie about that. I I didn't lie. What you did? <sighs> Are you done? Yeah. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm like. What? Yeah, some sort of like blood. What? Oh, nosebleed. <sighs> no, good. <laughs> Nothing you're saying is making any sense. Oh, we're not virgins now. We deflowered each other. We have each other's flower. He wasn't a virgin. Well, he did it like he was a virgin. I mean, like a second. <laughs> like. Uh... I didn't lose my virginity to you. You said you were a virgin. No, I didn't. Because I'm not. And I haven't lied in two years. Yeah, I probably slept with like six people. Six people? And that what you do? You don't even know if it's six people. Oh my god. Six people, and it only took like three seconds. I just wanted it to be special. You're gonna have so much unspecial sex in your life. I was on top. Who the fuck is on top their first time? <laughs> you mean like awareness of how many civilians we've killed since the invasion in Iraq? Oh Shut my up. god. They go to houses that are in the market and just go look at them? That is so sad and depressing. <laughs> like, to go to houses that you probably want but can't afford and just look at them. I mean, I know people could be like, oh my god, it's like window shopping for clothes that you can't buy. But no, it's not. That's even sadder. She got into one. Which one did she get into? I bet you it was New York. I know it was you who did the just married thing. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. I'm going to punish you. Oh, why not? I just realized who she is. She's Suki's mom, uh, or grandmother, not mother. Why don't I look like the girls in the magazines? Because they're photoshopped. Mm, that it. looks okay. Is it too pink? Is it pink? Oh, it is. It's like hot pink. Why can't you say I look nice? 
Well, girl, if you like it, take it. I wish that you liked me. Of course I love you. But do you like me? I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version? <laughs> so no, you don't like your daughter. Can you take me to my friend Julie's house, please? Sure. Who's Julie? A friend she abandoned because she want to be cool. You know what? I don't like stuff like that. Like, a lot of movies does that. And I don't like that shit. Where you're friends with somebody and then you want to be like, Oh, I want to be cool and different so I become friends with these cool people or whatever your idea of cool is. And then you will totally abandon your friend, and it's like when you can understand that being with cool people doesn't make you happy, and it's just not you, and it's not who you are. You want to go back to your friend, because like, what kind of friend are you? <laughs> what kind of friend are you to abandon your friend, and then at the last minute when you figure out, hey, this is not what I want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go back to my life and just go back to my friend and be friends with my old friend. Like, fuck you. Like, I wouldn't want a friend that abandoned me to go hang out with some random ass motherfuckers. And then at the last minute, when school is about to be done and prom is coming up, or it is the day of prom, you want to come back to me. This is when you want to come back to me and be like, hey, I'm sorry that I abandoned you until you forgot you fucking existed. Friends again? Fuck you. <laughs> No, not friends again. I need one movie where they do this shit and a person does not take back their friend. Because what kind of person are you to do that to somebody? That's, that's so f up. It's like, now you want to be my friend? Now you want to be? Now you want to remember I fucking exist in this world? Hmm. Huh? Now? Because your fucking cool friends think you're weird now? And they don't fucking like you now? Because you realize that are a bunch of fucking phonies and weirdos and liars. <laughs> now you want to be back, my friend? Now you want to come back around? Want to apologize? No. Like, I don't need somebody that's going to abandon me. And then want to come back to me when they figured out, hey, I don't like these people people these new people so i'm gonna go back to my old friends that like let me talk like fucking walk all over them no go get some new new friends don't come over here like i fucking hate that shit Lost for you, I'm so... this is cute but still uh, did you find out about the wait list oh fuck what Oh my god, I was about to say, wait, she didn't go? She's gonna go to Davis? It's not like I'm definitely going to New York. I knew it was gonna be a school in New York. I knew it. Yes, I know it was probably easier because 9-11 and less people applying with terrorism and all that, but- Where is this set? Are you and mom gonna get a divorce over this? No. We can't afford to. <laughs> I'm kidding, no. I love your mom. I mean, like, she should be a little bit happy that your daughter's going for her dream in Kapapugeren. He got in. Ah, uh, they're O3? When was that 11? Because <laughs> if it's O3, uh, yeah, okay, probably she did get in because people are not applying to n New York schools. You're not coming. You can't walk up to the gates anymore anyway. Yeah, but I'm going to college. Well, Dad will walk you to security. Parking's too expensive here. This is seriously so childish. Your daughter is going to college. To a college that she wants to go to. Be happy for her. The f I'd be so ecstatic if I was a parent. But you're going to college in New York. Like, if I was a parent that didn't get my dream that I wanted. Like, a good job or a nice house. If my child could get that, I'd be happy for them. I'd be so fucking so and on top of that I'd be so happy that they're far away from me because you know what I could have peace <laughs> me and my husband or whatever whatever whoever the fuck I married will have peace we would probably I would be still working yes but we would have our house to ourselves my son just got a job so he needs to get the fuck out you're going to college this is gonna be me and my husband we got Saturdays and Sundays to ourselves do some romantic stuff what have a great time just be at peace 
Don't have to worry about you. And don't have to spend so much money on them anymore. She got a, what, a scholarship, so I don't have to pay for shit. Start a savings account. And if I already have one, start another one. <laughs> they have two savings accounts. Like, why are you so mad, girl? This could be beneficial for you, too. I'd be happy if my child gets the dream that they want and I never got that. I would feel like I would understand. Like, if I would have gotten my dream, it would have made me feel so ecstatic. And her getting her dream, I'd be happy for her. Because she's ecstatic. Because she actually achieved it. Like, I get it. It's sad to let go. But, like, y'all gotta have to, y'all gotta be happy for your kids. Stop being selfish a little bit. <laughs> you can be selfish at some things, but when you have children, you can't be selfish like that. It's okay. She'll be back. See? You gotta just pull your emotion aside sometimes and just be happy for your children, for reals. <laughs> like, it's so sad. Where, where are you from? Sacramento. Sorry, where? San Francisco. Oh, cool. Yeah, San Francisco's a great city. <laughs> Girl, you're still lying about who you are. You need to love yourself. Okay, you're from Sacramento, California. Girl, <laughs> just say that. You gotta stop caring about what other people think. Did <laughs> she get alcohol poisoning? Excuse me, what day is it? Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. That's it. That's the end. Okay. That's it. That's the end of this. You know what? I like Lady Bird because, you know, it just feels like those movies that I grew up with. I grew up with a lot of coming of age stories and I love them. I just like the writing and you could just relate to a lot of stuff because it's literally about coming from childhood to teenhood to adulthood and then figuring out shit and they have flaw characters and all of them are like really good <laughs> you know and i love that their storytelling is really nice so i don't have anything to say all i said was like what i said already is like that's it they're both kind of like selfish in a way but like we're human sometimes we're gonna be selfish but also it's not like a bad thing to be selfish you know and sometimes we don't regard other people's feelings because we're like caring about our feelings one thing that i do hate about a lot of uh, coming of age stories or just teen stories is the whole dump my best friend for a new crowd and then come back at the end for my best friend and then the best friend just like forgives them because it's like if that was me and you don't want to be my friend anymore bitch we're not gonna be our friends ever Ever. And I know people grow and they they grow out of their friendship and whatever. But, like, the way that some people write these stories and how they just abandon their friend. It's not a growing out of. It's just you abandon your friend because you want to be fucking cool. And because you think your friend is not cool enough to bring them with you with the cool crowd. And that's the problem. Because, like, you don't think I'm cool enough. You think I'm, like, this weird person. And you're good enough to be seen as cool. And I'm not. So you're just gonna leave me behind. Because I'm, like, this un this weird package. <laughs> so you can go hang out with the cool kids. And then you realize that they're not that great. And you want to go back to your old self. And your old self is rooted within your family and me. And so you want to come back into my life. And it's like, if I was any of these characters, I would slam the door. Like, And that's not me being a horrible person or a selfish person. It's like, fuck you. I have feelings too. And I hate how they they write the secondary character, the best friend, as like this always forgiving always okay with this treatment type of person or like would forgive them for saying hey sorry for abandoning you like no there's more to it than sorry for leaving you and thinking you're not cool enough like i don't know i feel like there, it should be more like it should be more 
more than just coming up and saying sorry. It should be a grand gesture to try to get your best friend back because abandoning somebody like that and then coming on the front doorstep at prom night or something and just apologizing is not enough. Like, that's abandonment, okay? <laughs> you could create very much traumatic shit into somebody's heart for abandoning them. Like, people will fucking carry on the abandonment of their parents for life. And I get it. That's probably way different and way more, like, a tense level because that's your parent. They basically either birth you or help put you in your mother's wound <coughs> or something like that or they're like a caretaker of you they take care of you they're your guardian I don't even have to be a parent like per se it could just be like an acting parent or somebody that was there that like took care of you at a very young age to like yeah and then they abandoned you or were there for you at a very young age and then you just up and left and I understand that's, like, way much intense than, like, a best friend leaving you. But friendship breakup, it's not even a breakup, it's abandonment. <laughs> friendship abandonment is also hard because that's somebody you know for a really long time. It doesn't even have to be from Sandbox or Kindergarten. It could be somebody you known since, like, freshman year of high school or, like, from middle school. You knew each other for so long. You have an attachment to each other. And then you abandon me. That could leave trauma. And then you want to just come back and be like, sorry. And then they're like, okay. <laughs> like, no. Like, if you're going to do that, you better grand gesture my ass. You better swoon my ass, okay? Okay. Like, you're not going to just come to my front door and be like, sorry. <laughs> Let's be friends again. And I'm going to be like, yeah. Like some pathetic little person. Like, that just needs you so badly. Like, no, I will slam the door in your face. Do better. Do much, much better. Like, that's one thing that I hate about stories. Like, coming of age stories. Because they always have that friend that they just leave behind. And then come back to, like, near the end of the movie. And the friend just take them back. And I just, I don't like that. <coughs> I hate that. You need to do more. <coughs> So that's it. That's one thing that I have problems with these, this genre, uh, coming of age type of movies, the best friends. But I like it. This is the type of movie that you just watch and you learn stuff from. And that's why I like coming of age movies. You just watch, you learn stuff from. There's not that much that you could like talk about. I mean, like there's a lot, but like you, it's just a movie that you watch, you sit with, and that's it. You don't have to say anything. Um, it's a really good movie. I would watch this again, but it's just like, yeah, coming of age movie. Um, if you guys like my reaction to this film, this movie, you could give it a big old thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more of me, you could hit that subscribe button somewhere over here, anywhere. Um, and thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.